ingredients. It doesn't really matter too much. Just started. Okay. Right. I lived in Hull for many, many years, and there's one thing you get in Hull, which is the patty butty. My mate John O'Morley once had not patty and chips twice, but patty and chips thrice. Since I've moved away from Hull, I've been unable to get this delicacy in any chip shop since I've left. So today I'm going to attempt for my mate's 50th birthday to recreate the Hull patty. You can't find this recipe on the internet, I've tried, so I reckon I can come up with it myself. So, let's go through the ingredients. Potatoes. I'm using Maris Piper, a floury potato, about one kilogram. Sage. Salt. Pepper. That'll do the constituency of the patty. For the batter, I'm using self-raising flour, about four ounces, 150 millilitres of water. Uh, that's it. Because let's face it, the patty is a basic, basic staple food. So, let's go and peel these bad boys. Right, the potatoes have now been peeled and I've placed them in some slightly salted water and we're going to bring them to the boil. Meanwhile, I've cranked up this guy, the deep fat fryer. Obviously not a chip shop deep fat fryer, but I think he will do. I'm going to use sunflower oil because Jono, after all, is a vegetarian. Whilst these are boiling, we're going to get on with the batter. So if we pan down to the table, this is what we're going to go for a batter. Most people go for a beer batter, but let's face it, a chip shop in Hull is not going to have any beer, apart from the people that are buying the chips and the patties. So, four ounces of self-raising flour, and all we're going to do, add a pinch of salt to that. A little bit, there we go. And we're going to slowly, slowly add water. And as we go through the water, we are going to beat this slowly into a batter. I'll come back to you so when I'm done. And as you can see, I'm going to leave this to stand. Water, soft raising flour, a bit of salt and no lumps. So we'll leave that to stand for a bit while we wait for the potatoes to boil. And as you can see, the potatoes have boiled, so we're now going to mash them. This is where the technical part will come with the sage. But one kilogram of potatoes, and we're going to mash those up. See, get right into the pan there and get that. I'm not adding any butter or milk because I don't believe for any, any stretch of the imagination that would be the case in a chip shop. And we want to make these as nature intended. So a bit of mashing and then we're going to go to the sage. And this is going to get a bit more technical. The potatoes are still hot but I'm going to start them originally with a teaspoon of sage and that I think is probably going to be enough for this. I'm going to mash that in. I'm just checking my quantities there. And that looks about the right sort of amount of sage that we have in hull. I'm happy with that. And I think also then I might just add a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. So a dash of salt, and I'll need a dash, but a little, and then some black pepper. And that is it. And what I'm then going to do, I'm going to mash that around, and then we're going to let that cool a bit. I go to the next stage and make the, the mixture sufficiently cool. So what I've done here, I've got a lightly greased ring, we were misses, and I'm going to fill, try and make some circular patties with that. So just using a teaspoon, I'm going to push that in. Uh, as requested, I'm going to make small patties to start off with. You can see the stage in there, and all I'm doing really is trying to use this ring to give me a roundish sort of patty, which I'm then going to batter. Now this is going to be my tester, and we'll see how we do, but at the moment I'm looking for this to go like that, and I'm thinking, probably, I'm going to try this one like that, but I might well end up freezing these and going for a deep fry with a freeze, but we're going to do the experiment with this one. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the fridge for a few minutes to really firm up a bit before I apply the batter. Okay, so we're going to go for our first one. So I've got the batter going here, so I'm going to put that into the batter there. I've got the hot oil here. Get that well battered up. If I turn that over. Yes, these definitely will need to be frozen, I think, without a shadow of a doubt. But there's the batter. Up we come. I think I'm going to use a spatula for this one. Get it under. Whoops. To think about flour perhaps as well. Here's the experiment, we're in and washed into the fat we go. 
let's see how we do. Come back to me in a minute and I'll tell you how we do. Right, it's been about five minutes and I'm feeling quietly confident about this because here comes my first attempt at a patty. Out it comes. And a bit of seepage, but I'm going out onto the paper. And if I don't say myself, that looks pretty damn good. So we shall take it over. Just dab it off a bit. Now, I've all gone for the traditional batter on my patty. Um, Bob Carver's goes with a breadcrumb, but I don't believe that's the case. So, here we go. Let's experiment nice and hot with a close up of this as we go for the first patty for ooh, well over 20 years. So, I'm going to cut from the middle. I can straight away get a crack there of the batter. I'm going to cut down. I'm going to open up. I'll open it towards you. There, looks a reasonable consistency of potato, got the break there, so let's have a try John T, let's have a try. I think I've nailed it, I'll see you Wednesday mate. <laughs>